good afternoon everyone i ankit on behalf of nan and vadbani foundation would like to invite you all for this webinar and also introduce our expert mrs kosir khan mrs kosir khan is a leading certified corporation corporate etiquette and grooming consultant and has presented her seminars to a diverse portfolio of business organizations and b schools across the country her conviction with regard to potential in every human being to excel beyond his imagination is very strong and forms the basis of her training the key to success is the belief in them she evokes a positive self response within individuals so that they start believing in their own capabilities it gives her immense pleasure to witness her audience's paradigm shift during and after the workshops her mission in life is to assist individuals flourish and progress even during extreme stress and adverse circumstances and also be a source of positivity and inspiration she has been nominated by tata national entrepreneurship network hottest startup awards her workshop have been usually successful in various organizations accenture wipro bosch sap india herman lundbeck mantri ifb biocon i am bangalore to name a few kasir khan believes that success in today's highly competitive business arena requires immense courage and determination she holds a certificate as a trainer in etiquette and grooming from usa and masters degree in economics diploma in fashion designing from mumbai personal hobbies include training people reading writing traveling observing people self development to name a few before i hand over floor to mrs khan a quick note to all our attendees you will all be on mute you may ask questions by typing in the panel provided our expert will answer the questions after her presentation over to you mrs khan Thank you, um, Ankit, for the wonderful introduction. It was truly humbling. It's a pleasure to be on NEN, and thank you for making this happen. Uh, today we'll be talking of presentation skills. It's one of thank God that it's, it's an acquired skill. It's a skill that can be nurtured over a period of time. Creating a positive impact through presentations. Presentation happens to be one of those events. where you have got people who are a little scared but the people who are very very good at it have been able to make a very very positive impact uh there have been a lot of people who would have to improve their presentation skills most most of them believe that if you are good in your verbal communication you would also be very good in your presentation skills but that's not the case there are a lot of elements which go about in making a presentation a very effective one there is a lot of difference in an effective presentation and just an ordinary presentation let's see if we can really add value to this now uh, the agenda for uh, today is uh, the introduction of we need to plan your presentation the presentation needs to definitely have a sequence presentation techniques and creating an visual aid of course practice there are no substitutions when it comes to this but i think this is one of the area where people don't really pay attention to and i think by far one of the most important aspects of it and in terms of presentation uh, we need to understand how to control an anxiety uh, it has to be very audience centered we have to necessarily accomplish objectives and it has to be fun for the audience and that's possible only when it is fun for you and any presentation if it is if it crosses the time limit and i guess it loses its effectiveness and these are those elements which contribute towards making a presentation a very effective one now when we are actually giving a presentation we need to understand there are three main purposes one can be either to inform or it could be to persuade the third could be to educate so when you are actually giving a presentation you need to analyze find out what kind of presentation are you going to give it has to be one of these three now when you already know that you are going to be giving a presentation and it's going to be on oh, one of the three the first thing that you have to do is plan it is only up you can execute it only if you plan and if there is no planning the execution is going to be rather slow when you're planning you have to determine the purpose and for the purpose we go back to slide 3 which says it either has to inform educate or persuade based on which you are going to start 
preparing your presentation. As a matter of fact, when somebody asks you to give a presentation, the first question that, that you have to be asking them is, who are my target audience? And uh, based on your target audience is what you can prepare the presentation. For example, if you are giving a presentation on motivation, your content is going to be very different if it is going to be in an induction batch. It's going to be very, very different if it's going to be the team lead. If it's going to be uh, the first time managers, it's going to be different. And when it is going to be the uh, leadership, your content is going to be different. So if you do not know who your target audience are, the main purpose is defeated. You also need to understand if it is going to be a physical presentation where you have to be physically present and not a webinar, uh, you also have to understand what is going to be the size of the audience. Now, presentation can be a walkthrough presentation where if you are going to be meeting a client, you could be taking them around to tell them the, the different areas of the project and uh, different people working in different areas. That is also that's also called as a walkthrough presentation. You also have a one-to-one -one presentation where you know you just put everything down on the uh, laptop and you're just moving moving the slides and you're also explaining or you're taking the questions as well. You have the third uh, presentation where you're standing in front of an audience and this can mean Either you, your audience are large in number, it can be 30, 50, 100, it can keep increasing. It's also possible that you also have a very small audience. I think the smaller the audience, I think you have to pay greater attention to details. You also have to understand which, which part of the world do, do they come from. Because if you have the Germans interacting with you, there are certain things that you have to keep in mind because they, would, they, are, they, they are very data-based. They are not very, very elaborate. So you will have to keep in mind from which part of the world that you are, which part of the world that your audience come from. And the knowledge level, when you're talking about what are my tar target audience, you also have, I have to understand, even if, uh, if you're, you're taking the, uh, marketing, the marketing managers uh, and if they are PhD holders, it means your knowledge level, your research has to be has to be very deep. And motivation, and what exactly motivates you to be giving your presentation? One thing before giving your presentation is something that you have to tell yourself. Do not give a presentation or do not communicate to impress people. Just do to the best of your ability. And based on that is what you're going to start planning your presentation. And when you plan your presentation, it's also important that you go and see where the location and the place where you have to make a presentation. The number of seats, the seating arrangements, whether the audiovisual equipment is good enough, uh, whether it's going to be a daytime uh, and it's going to be a daytime or it could be in the evening. Because if it's going to be post lunch, then I think it has to be pretty high on humor, it has to be very, very interactive. And I think educating them in post punch is going to be a slightly difficult. Uh, uh, it's going to be a slightly difficult. Time. It's going to be a little challenging, not not difficult. Uh, when you plan the space, it's you have to keep in mind that when you walk into the presentation room, uh, you have to walk in light of the data. You have to be. You cannot be standing behind the podium and speaking and giving your presentation. It's not done. It's very important for you to be using the space. But that is why you see that the place is not too clustered. When you're planning your presentation, you have to have it very organized. Uh, determine your main points. When you're opening your presentation, you have to organize just like the way it is in the form of a story. I have to explain it. Uh, a story has got, has got the, ba the broad uh, uh, baseline. And it spills over to your to your main the main story, and then it has the conclusion, which has the ending. Likewise, even when you're planning your presentation, it needs to determine the main points. You will have to stand there and tell them why, what, how, and then each slide you will, will have to give them evidences. What is if the question is what is presentation all about? 
you will have to give them evidences on that. Why is it important? A couple of slides on that. And when you have the transition from one slide to another slide, make sure that the uh, closing line of one of the previous slide is the opening line of the other slides, which is how exactly you are going to be preparing the outline. So the part three is presentation sequence. The moment you get into the, the presentation, it's very important that you, you, you start connecting with them. When I say start connecting with them, I don't mean start talking to them directly. Your communication starts the moment you enter the room and people have noticed the fact that you are there or vice versa. It's possible the moment you have seen your participants, your communication will have started with them. So uh, there are two things, either that you walk into the, uh, into the, into the room with a very pleasant face and you stand there, look at your audience, look into their eyes and smile, communicating that you are happy to be there. And, and that's why it's very important that you're not late. When you come in a little early, it's important that you get to meet one or two of them, have a handshake, because handshake gives you, gives you a lot of information about their, uh, their objectives and uh, as to with what kind of attitude they have come into the, into the forum, whether they are very casual, their expectations are too high, whether they want to be stars, they know a lot of information themselves. So with just a handshake, you can read the audience quite a bit. Learn their names because a name is very important to a person. Mingle and don't start cracking jokes and be uh, be, be over friendly because your first impression is very important, professional but very pleasant. So when people and one more tip is uh, if people like the presenter, they would like the presentation. So you have to give a lot of importance to your first impressions, but do not pick. When you are opening your presentation, introduce introduce yourself and also say that why you are there. And this can be done either by a lot of humor. Uh, when I say humor, humor has to be very subtle. And everything you say, every little thing you say has to go towards the presentation. If it is on motivation, the jokes which you use and the humor which is being used has to be towards towards motivation. You can also start off on an anecdote or a, sto uh, a storyline because that, that's what stays with, with people. You can also, in order to gain their attendance, uh, in, and in order to get their attention, you can also start off on startling statistics. You can ask questions which can make the audience think. Now by this, you will have to have you will have to have a very interactive session which is you invite either participation and you get the audience respond. Do not start off where everybody is just looking at you and waiting to see what, what you're going to say them. It would it is not a presentation, it will become a lecture. So in your when you're opening your presentation, it's very important that you mingle with them, make them feel a little comfortable. I don't mean very comfortable because it will get on a very informal mode. You have to be defining the topic whether going back to slide three, which is it's going to be to persuade or it's information or it's going to be to educate. If it is to inform, the clear parameters of the content has to be defined. If you are going to, it's going to be a persuasive, persuasive presentation. What the problem is, who cares, and the solution. Do not keep it an open. If it, is a, if it is a persuasive presentation, don't keep the end open, which is don't go out without giving a solution to it. Because every problem comes to the solution. So when you are opening the, the, the topic, which is going to be the first couple of slides, and I say couple of slides, slides, I mean two, maximum could be three, but restricted to two, you are giving them an overview, which is telling them the agenda, and the first slide is going to be telling them how you are going about it. You are going to be giving them the role code now. The main points have to be have to have every every slide needs to have 
and um, supportive, supportive, not call it a document, but a supporting slide. But it's very important that do not give, don't put everything on the slide because you are, you are the main, you are the main tool of the presentation. So very few points would be given on the presentation slide. But a lot would come in, be coming in from you. Please give examples, take feedbacks, questions, etc. And this is the, that is the core of it. So you have finished the introductions, the greetings and the introductions. You are done with the core, and when you come to the conclusion, which you are uh, getting the objectives done, you will have to summarize the points, and it has to come to a neat end. Most people finish the core and just uh, finish it off in a great hurry by saying, I'm done with it, and this is all I have to say, which is a very incorrect way of, which is a very incorrect way of uh, giving a presentation. And after you have summarized it, please make sure that the agenda has been covered with the consent of the audience. And uh, last but not least, you have to say, I will be very happy if I can answer some of the questions for you. Well, it, is, it depends whether you wish to take the questions at the end of the session or you wish to take it at, uh, as, as and when you are just moving ahead with each chapter. Coming to the effective presentation techniques. A presentation just by the slides could not be very effective. You have to understand the purpose, the people, the preparation, the planning, the personality, and the performance. Performance is extremely important when it comes to the six P's or the, the principle of effective, effective de uh, delivery of the position. Uh, there are three elements which you have to take care of is the vocal technique here, your pitch, your loudness, the rate at which you speak and pausing. All these things have to be have to be very carefully rehearsed. You cannot be either very, very soft spoken, you cannot be very, very loud, neither your pitch can be too high, and the rate of speech has to be very comprehensible, neither too neither too slow, neither too fast. And I think pausing, which we call it as the power of silence, pause is also an aspect of the comma. So uh, using a pause in order to attract the attention of the audience in case uh, in a presentation you have one or two, uh, one or two audience who might not be really interested or who are, who are very distracted. And I think you can use the power of silence, which is pause. Uh, in order to get that attention back. Body language by far is one of the most important aspects when it comes to the presentation skills because if you are not confident in your mind, uh, it's going to show very, very clearly when it comes to your body language because body language has to, is the manifestation of your attitude which is ruled by 90% of your subconscious mind. So for you to be very confident, you should think uh, confidently and maintain eye contact. Eye contact is extremely important, not just with one or two people who are sitting as, as the participants and whom you believe have put you under the comfortable zone, but with all the participants who are saying, now for this you can either divide your participants into whichever way is convenient to you, but you always have to divide them, you always have to look at your participants from the right to the left. I repeat, you always start looking at your audience from the right side to the left side. You, you pause over there, you come back to your right, and then you start again. You can divide them either from the front row, the back row, the back row, and the front row, I mean in the same order, or whichever is convenient, convenient to you. And there are people who have told me time and again, they're very, they're very, it, they, they get very nervous when they look at the expression in the eyes because eyes speak a lot. There's something just called the language of the eyes and speak. If you can read that, you can you can read what people think about. So uh, if you are if you're a little apprehensive or if this that is something that throws you off here, yeah, then you can look at the third eye, the third eye which is on the forehead, or you may also look at the space between 
the nose and the lip which is the upper lip the little dent between your upper lip and your nose now when you're looking at these two positions whichever is convenient to you your your eyeball does not know it gives an optical illusion to the other person that you are looking into their eyes so you are not really looking into their eyes but you can also get away with the fact that they are giving you looks which can actually throw you off care and uh, gestures which you have to use the most important one is uh, your hand gestures when you are giving a presentation please have open palm gestures do not hold on to anything even if it means behind the podium don't clutch on something uh, you know indicating that you are very very nervous and uh, people who give with their palms facing towards the ground is an indication of a lot of authority over whatever they are saying. So, uh, and then your posture has to be very straight, which is your shoulders straight, your chin paddled to the ground, and your eyes looking either into the eyes of the audience, if you can, again, from right to left, or the third eye, or the space between the nose and, and, and the lip. And move move in the area don't stand at one space but do not move across the screen you will have to move in such a way that you are not stopping yourself from the, the participants from looking at the screen and stand in a position where everybody can see you but just don't don't be very static you have to you have to be a little mobile Okay, uh, gathering feedback from the audience can be done uh, not not just by written formats, but the way they are looking at you, uh, the interest what they have in you, the nodding of the head, the inclination of of their uh, of of the neck, uh, are indications to uh, to give you a feedback whether the, the participants are interested in you or not. Supposing there is a person who is not, which is bound to happen in almost all presentations. If the person is not really interested, I would strongly suggest that please use the um, either use the spotlight uh, technique, which is we ask them, which is stop, and we ask them questions and their feedback, which is getting them straight back into the presentation. Or you could even use the power of silence, which is uh, which is stopping for for uh, for a moment, just for about a few seconds. And if you are addressing a very very large audience, it's not it's you. You cannot be looking into everybody's eyes, so you need to scan their heads. Okay, when you are having um, the body movement, don't face from right to left and left to right as you are marching or with your hands behind. Your movements should have a purpose. You will have to move like a predator, which is well calculated. What you're saying, your verbal and your non verbal communication have to be in sync. You also need to have your slides, your verbal communication, your not verbal communication and the and the uh, feedback from the audience all to be in the same sync. And for this, the only thing that you will not have during practice is for audience, but on the assumption is what you'll have to practice. Uh, the common problems that people have when they're actually giving their presentations are fillers. This happens because uh, either you are not very well prepared or it can happen when you forget something or it can also happen when you have a lot, lot to say. So um, verbal, verbal, verbal fillers could be uh, uh, and you know those, those, uh, those short gaps which you have those are indications that they are verbal fillers, but you also have the non-verbal fillers, which is swaying, rocking, pacing. The hands in the pocket. A lot of men put the hands in the pocket, gentlemen. The the pockets were not stitched for the hands, so kindly refrain yourself from doing that. Lip smacking, fidgeting, and most importantly, your inability to be looking into the audience. Uh, these are certain problems that have to be uh, have to be addressed. When you are giving a presentation, you need to smile. That is one curve that can straighten out a lot of things. But having said that, there are about six different types of smiles, so do not try to fake a smile. Uh, yes, I also know that when you're standing and giving a presentation, you can have a very nervous smile. 
but if you're smiling genuinely, uh, there would be wrinkling of your eyes, which means there is going to be a contraction of your pupil, followed by the curve, which is the smile. So try and smile. Uh, even if it means a light smile, it should be a very, very pleasant one. And don't forget to breathe. That can uh, get you into a lot of problems. When I say breathe, I don't mean heavy breathing. If you're very nervous, it's perfectly all right to take three deep breaths and then start off. You can also take sips of water or juice between the presentations. It's totally acceptable. And if you have any notes, try and put them, put those notes on your laptop where the others can't see you, but you will be able to see them rather than holding it in your hand. Holding it in your hand is also acceptable, but this is a slightly, you know, you can write it on the middle post means and uh, and then and just stick it on on whichever slide that you wish to concentrate on, and the matter has to be delivered more, is what you can just post it on your laptop. And don't try and finish it on time, neither too early nor too late. Now, the other techniques which you can be using for your presentation, if you're just going to be using slides, it can be pretty boring. So the other, the other um, options which you have can be flip charts, computer projections, audiovisual aids, real objects, posters and pictures, make it as a visual, the visual impact has to be right. Um, with this, um, you, can, you can conclude on the note and ask them if there are any questions to be asked and see if the agenda has been covered. And with this, I come to the end of the presentation and I will be very happy if uh, I can answer some of the questions. Thank you very much. So let's move on to Q&A session now. We have our first question from Mr. Matthew. Are there any guidelines for size of the text, number of words per slide? Oh yes, yes. You can put only about three points in a slide, not beyond that. You can just have three points. Four is a possibility, but five is no. Try not to. Three. Three to four lines is acceptable. Thank you for your question. Yeah, we have another question. Should be you should we use a plain background yes. for a slide or a ready template? Ready template is, is accepted as depending on the kind, the color of the font that you would be using, a plain is acceptable. I think it is most professional to be using it. But if it is a little glazed, also accepted. But it should not be very floral, it should not be very decorated. It, it, it doesn't show professionalism. Thank you for your question. Next question. How can we manage to re remember names during the presentation with around 20 people? All right. When you are, uh, when you are starting the, the presentation, if you are giving a very formal uh, presentation, um, you will not be really interacting with people and knowing their names. But supposing it is an informal presentation that you are going to be making and your first session is going to be on an icebreaker, one thing is you are going to be remembering their names and relating it to something and always repeat the person after they have, uh, they, you have asked them for the, for the name. For example, if it's going to be Ankit, they, the name is Ankit, thank you Ankit, and use their names as much as possible during the conversation or during the discussion or during the, the presentation. If you forget, please ask them again, but then try and repeat their names. And if you, it is a name that you cannot really pronounce it properly, you have, to, you have to ask for the actual pronunciation of the name. Ask them to spell it out and relate it to something that will make you remember the, uh, the, the name. It comes with a lot of listening skills. Your listening skills have to be high. Thank you for your question. The next question is, uh, few people have a problem of shivering. How to tackle with that problem? Yes. Okay. All right. Shivering happens with nervous people. The first thing is you are nervous because you are trying to impress people. You have to tell yourself people are not not going to uh, harm you if you're going to be giving a, a bad presentation. And never, uh, never communicate the interest. So don't start stand there and think that people are going to be judging you. If you are just going to be yourself, 
tell yourself that you're going to be doing something to the best of your ability. I guess first of all the nervousness goes. And if you still have that shivering, I think you need to accept yourself for the way you are. Take three deep breaths, take a glass of water and tell yourself you're going to do a very good job and just I would also suggest that you can keep your hands in the back for some time and you know hold your fist very, very tight. One, two, three, and then release. You know, this releases a lot of energy. If you can do this twice before starting the presentation, I think you are going to be at a very equal uh, equilibrium and your mind will, will be pretty calm. Thank you for your question. Our next question is from Mr. Raghav Goel. Uh, how to make out whether presentation is appearing to be boring or interesting? All right. Uh, this is the feedback, uh, Mr. Goel, that, that is a very interesting question. Um, you get a lot of information through the body language of a person. You will be surprised, it's 93% of your communication is body language and that is what you need to learn to read. Uh, when people are not looking at you and even if they are looking at you, they are gazing at you, they are looking either at the watch, they are yawning or they have this expressionless face and they are not interacting with you in spite of you trying to interact with them and has become a one-way tra traffic. These are evidences to show that the presentation is pretty boring which means you have to make a lot of effort to take it to a different level. I hope I have answered your question. Mr. Our next question is from Mr. Santosh. Is it advisable to prepare presentation by making use of lot of clip arts? Yes it is. Yes it is. But 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 not but not too many. But here and there, just just to make the presentation interesting, yes, you could. But not too many in number. I think the entire presentation, uh, if you have about two or three, acceptable. But not beyond that. Thank you for your question. Okay. Our next question is from Mr. Trupti. Uh, what, what precautions we need to take while giving presentation to upper manager or any upper class officer? All right. When you are, which means you are going to determine the audience. You, when you're giving your presentations to probably your boss or um, your, your higher ups, uh, you will have to see that you have researched enough in order to be uh, to be giving them matter, giving them authentic evidences of everything that has been said, and also the objectives are very very clearly defined. So when they're asking you to give up a the presentation, you have to be you have to be asking them on what. You have to be asking them a lot of specific questions uh, for how many minutes and uh, who my target audience are. One thing you should keep in mind is never be scared because they, they, will, they will not be gauging you, but I think you have, can use these forums in, in, in order to portray your communication skills or your knowledge level skills. Do not, uh, do not give any presentations to your bosses or the higher ups without having researched or without having data or without having any authentic evidences. This is totally unacceptable. Thank you, Chukki, for your question. Yes. Uh, to what extent of humor should we go to in a professional presentation? Okay. That is a very good question. Thank you for it. Um, your questions, if you are a very good presenter, you may use humor but it has to be very subtle humor and it depends on the kind of target audience that you have. If it is an audience which is very young, then I can use, you can use a little more humor. But if it is for, for the senior level and for the leadership, use very subtle humor. But everything that you say, every joke that you choose to crack, uh, every, every ending quote you make or anything that you have to say has to be towards the presentation and nothing to be said out of context and never use humor on anybody else. It's acceptable to use humor on yourself, on, on any object, but never on the audience. It is unacceptable. Thank you for your question. Next question, please. Question says, is it okay to move into the audience during the presentation? Oh yes, it is. In fact, it is recommended but don't stand at a point where the people in the front row are not able to see you. If you wish to move right into it, please come out of it as soon as possible. Otherwise, it, the, the people in the front row will have to move their, move their uh, where the body, where they have to turn to the, 
uh, seeing you, which, which could get very uncomfortable. But it is advised, it is suggested, strongly su suggested that please move into your audience, uh, please move through your audience, but that would depend on the spacing between the chairs and the seating arrangements. Thank you. Uh, our next question is from Mr. Jacob. Uh, what will be the slight limits for a presentation? What should be the slight limits? Uh, well, there is nothing called a slight limit. It would depend on the time duration of, uh, it could be 20 minutes of presentation. It, sometimes it could be it could be a one hour presentation, it could be a 45 uh, minute presentation. Depends on how much of time that your organization gives you. But when you have got this time limit, if it is 30 minutes, you have to divide it into 10 minutes for the introductions, greetings and the agenda, 10 minutes for your wrap up and you will be having uh, the rest, the, the, the rest which is going to be 15, uh, which is going to be the rest of the time which is for your course. So you will have to divide it accordingly. Uh, so there is nothing called, it depends on how much they give you as the time limit. But the accepted format is at least for about 20 minutes. I mean, that's generally they give you a 20 minute presentation. This is good. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. Mustafa. What to do when you notice uh, that uh, they, that people do not care of your presentation or when they ask you, some, ask you something, you do not know the answer because it is not related to the topic you are presenting? All right. First of all, you will have to thank them for, for the question, for asking them the question. If it is out of context, then you will have to say, I will, I have an answer for the, that is, if you have an answer for the question, say, I will be able to answer this question to you after the presentation because it is out of context, that is one. But if he's asking you a question in, which is a part of the context uh, in the presentation and you do not have an answer, you say, that is a wonderful question. I'm afraid I do not have the answer for it, but I will definitely get back to you. I will speak to you uh, regarding this after the session. And another one, very smart way of doing it is you ask the audience and throw it open to the audience where they say, I am, um, you know, he has Mr. XYZ, he has a wonderful question for, for all of us and please uh, put on your thinking caps and does anybody have an answer for this? Believe me, there is always one star in the audience who believes that he knows much more than the presenter himself. That person should be able to help you and from there you pick up the new strings and then type it if you have got enough information and you have research. But if you do not know the answer, I think with all the politeness and all humbleness, you have to tell them that I'm afraid I do not have an answer at this point, but I will definitely get back to you and thank you for bringing that question to me. The next question is from Mr. Raghav. What kind of verbal fillers shall we use when we are thinking or can't get right words to speak at that moment? All right, it happens very naturally because these fillers are not something that you can pre-plan. Whatever you are speaking, it happens with most speakers that sometimes you lose continuity, you lose track which can be due to the distraction from the audience. It could be sometimes you lose track of what you are saying. It could happen, but try your best, uh, try your best to avoid like a, uh, um, you know, go have to be avoided. If you forget them, I would suggest that you can just give it a, a stop and say, I'm almost lost and when you're saying that, you should be able to regain and then come back. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. Tejasvi. I had an experience where one of my audience started a discussion of its own around on the point of my presentation didn't allow me to move ahead unless I answer them to their, uh, to their satisfaction. How do I tackle that? Alright, there are two ways of giving a presentation. One is telling them that I will be speaking on this topic for the next 15-20 minutes or whatever the time has been allotted to you and I will be inviting uh, questions at the end of the session which means any question that comes to you during the middle, uh, when you are giving the presentation to say I will be very happy to answer the, the questions to you at the end of the session. If you do not make this announcement, what happens is people constantly stop you from finishing your presentation, which means your presentation will never get, uh, will, will never get over on time. But supposing you have a discussion which is happening, I think it is advisable for you to say, this is, is taking us on a different route altogether, so what we will do is we will finish the the, present, the formal presentation and we will continue the discussion after the presentation. 
but I think it is up to the skill of the presenter in, in order to be handling such things because in every presentation you have a star, you have a deviator and you have a person who is not paying attention and a person who believes he knows much more than the presenter, a person who is constantly not only distracting others but also distracting the presenter. Yes, one needs to know the art of handling all these people and that comes with a lot of experience and a lot of self-confidence. And if you have rehearsed well, and I think you should be able to handle all these different kinds of uh, these elements in your, uh, in your presentation as well. Thank you. Next question, please. Our next question is from uh, Mr. Chetan. Can you please suggest some alternatives to PowerPoint which work better with animation? Any substitute? PowerPoint, I can use the flip charts, it's going to be very good. The, the flip charts should be very good. I think video clippings again should be extremely good, even when it comes to animations. So I think the, the techniques used for presentations should be very varied. It should just not be the PowerPoint presentation. I think a lot of other visual aids which I've already mentioned during the uh, making and impactful presentations have to be used. Otherwise it can become very boring and you have to understand even if everything fails, you the main tool shouldn't fail, uh, fail because you are the, the, the main tool for the presentation and it is not the PowerPoint. PowerPoint is just a back screen. Thank you. Okay. We have last question for the day. If we are presenting in a team, what additional pointers can you suggest to make it a success? Okay, the first thing is you have to understand if they are going to be liking the presenter, they will be liking the presentation. Try, try and be very high on energy, high on humor, uh, subtle on humor but very high on energy. Try and make it as interactive as possible. Stick to your time limit and um, I think the questions should be encouraged uh, and uh, and everything, if you have clearly defined and if you have done your research well, I'm sure your presentation could create a lot of positive and it could be a very dynamic one. Your presentation has to be very dynamic, not just your PowerPoint. If you're saying the presentation, I'm talking all the techniques and mainly you. It has to be very, very effective. Thank you. Okay, and I want to thank Mrs. Khan for that interesting session. And thank you to all our attendees for participating in the webinar. We are glad that the questions kept coming. Please do send in your feedback and suggestions to us at eclub at indianglobal.org. Also, if you found the session interesting, feel free to blog or post about it. The recorded version of the webinar will be available on our website eclub.indianonline.org by tomorrow. Do join us on for our next webinar in Tamil on 31st October on leveraging internet for the success of a small entrepreneur. And we don't have any webinar on 24th October due to Dashera. And have a nice day ahead. Thank you very much, uh, Ankit, and thank you all the participants, and thank you everyone for asking questions. It's been a wonderful uh, experience. Thank you.